Hey guys, how are you? And welcome to Russian Plus. In this video, we'll take a look at the 30 largest cities in Russia. I'll give you some brief info in each city, location on the map, pros and cons, weather and total annual sunshine hours, because sun is important, right? Russia is a huge country and you'll have a better understanding of it after watching this video. So let's start. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Guys, if you're new to the channel, my name is Miracle. Guys, I'm back again with another Russian video. I think it has been long I made Russian video and I said to myself before I make another Russian video I need to get like other kind of content so that you guys will see that Russia is beyond real station that I've been so showing also I've seen a lot of videos talking about Moscow is the only beautiful city in Russia that if you leave Moscow you go to another part of Russia you see mud houses you see people dying of hunger you see this and that and that so after I received this kind of comment I'll be like um maybe it is true maybe they, they are right but let me first of all search on Google I search on Google and Russia has a lot of beautiful cities and I search on YouTube I found a video that will be very very educative for people for all these ignorant people who feel like Moscow is only Russia have to show Russia is beyond Moscow Russia is a very beautiful country I hate the fact that people will sit in their house and make a country look bad because you don't like them it's okay you don't like Russia but do not convince us that like Russia not to like Russia because you hate Russia so in today's video we are going to be looking at some cities in russia this video is made by someone like usual i'm only reacting to this video but i'll be giving you my own opinion about the cities and also i'll try as much as possible while editing this video to get some other key information for you guys to debunk a lot of um, negative narrative about this particular country so let's go number 30 the 30th largest city in russia is kamerova the city has a population of 485,000 people. It's located in southwest Siberia on Tom River, in the major coal mining region known as Kuzbas, where 70% of Russian coal is mined. Kamerova was founded in 1918 and since then, coal industry has been dominant in the city. In addition to that, the chemical industry is big too. No wonder Kamerova has an air quality problem. Once in a nearby town, they had black snow because of the coal dust. Luckily, the city is one of the greenest in Russia. Average salary is $629 per month. As with most Siberian cities we're going to cover, the major downside is long cold winters. However, this didn't stop the population of Kamerova from growing by 14% since 2002, which brought a lot of new housing. Some of it is very impressive. Look at this neighborhood. You can live comfortable in Siberia too. This is what Russian housing should look like, I think. What do people do for fun here? Well, you can drive to Sheregesh, which is one of the best ski resorts in Russia, or to Altai Mountains, which is a fantastic place to be in the summer. Yearly sunshine hours? 1,965. To help you understand if that's good enough, I'll give you a point of reference. London gets 1,400 sunshine hours per year. New York, 2,500. Madrid, Spain, 2,700 hours. All right, let's keep going. No hey guys, uh, do you see more houses like as, as this video was showing, you saw a lot of mud houses, right? <laughs> yeah, guys. One of the reasons why I do not like comments on Insta on on social media is that a lot of people are so very ignorant. Ignorant. I don't know if I will call it the fact that a lot of children now access uh, phones and access internet and they can say anything, or just adults being children. Like I, I know that a lot of time adults are also part of these people who leave this kind of ignorant comment, not just children. So they say that as part from Moscow, that all Russians live in poverty, all Russians live in abject poverty, that they live in mud houses, there's no money, there's nothing in the place, nothing to do in Russia. But this is like top 30, this is number 30 of Russian city, of top 30 in uh, cities in Russia, and their annual salary is $650. One thing people don't know about annual salary or salary in a country is that part of the reason why some country has large or high salary is just because of the fact that cost of living is so high in that place and secondly the tax they pay in that place is extremely high so when a company is trying to budget a salary for his or her staff or their staff they will make it to be high so that after you remove taxes and pay for accommodation that means you have a lot of money to save but some countries where 
a lot of things are cheaper to do like cost of living are cheaper you see salary in that place is always very low let's take a uh, us as an example us have one of the highest annual salary in all the countries in the world however taxes and rents in us is so very high someone that earns 600 dollars in somewhere like this city in russia can have a better life compared to someone that earn uh, three uh, three thousand dollars in the us you get the reason being that cost of living in this city will be low the accommodation there will be low cost of living will be so low so at the end of the day you still have a lot of money to save most importantly russia is not a country that the government is taxing a lot it's taxing a lot russia pay a low tax why us pay highest high tax let's take example you're earning three thousand dollars in the us and you're paying accommodation two thousand dollars at the end of the day you have one thousand dollars in that inside that one thousand dollars you pay tax by the time you pay your 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 monthly and your monthly um house rent pay a light bill pay water bill everything you have nothing to save but when you stay in a country where there's not high money for accommodation and there's no big tax you need to pay you have a lot to save that is what people don't know i am making this video because i'm a traveler and also i feel like a lot of people will, will, will like learn a lot from this video i'm not i'm not a professional but i know that what i'm saying is true sometimes it's not about how much you earn us when you earn once you're earning in the us and you're spending in the us you're not you're not you will not be able to save anything you will not be able to make any use of that money the only time you have like a lot to do is when you're earning in us and you're spending outside us that is when you earn, like when, when you do a lot with that money let's say now you you are you are an immigrant and you do not want to live comfortable life you know that you're there to save up money and go to where you want to live com comfortable life so if you're earning something like three thousand dollars instead of going for rent that will take a lot of money you go for cheaper rent why you when you work you save and invest in the place you want to live for life so by the time the, you 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 have gathered a, enough money you move from the u.s to the place you want to base that is how it is that is how nigerians in 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 the u.s earn money they earn money by sending their money here in nigeria and investing their money in nigeria at the point where they have a lot of investment here in nigeria they have a backup so that money they are earning in the u.s will not be the only money they depend on but a lot of americans who live in america do not have second home everything they have is in america so they basically earn in the u.s and spend in the u.s and a lot of time it is not it does it does not have like a much benefit because of tax and high cost of living in the u.s please i'm not targeting this video as americans i'm just using an america as an example because they have high earnings compared to a lot of countries so let's continue watching this video because i'm enjoying it Number 29. Tomsk. Tomsk is just three hours away from Kamerova. It's standing on that same Tom River, and it almost has the same population, 488,000 people. It's one of the oldest towns in Siberia, founded in 1604. Today it's a college town with nine universities and a number of research institutions, and over 100,000 students, giving rise to the city's nickname, the Siberian Athens. The average salary is $670 a month, you're gonna get paid well working for oil and gas companies, but working in a grocery store will only pay $200 or $300 a month. Good jobs are scarce, and a lot of major companies closed down over the last 10 years. As with Kamerova, climate is a major downside. But here it's even worse because it's further up north. The record low for Tomsk is negative 55 Celsius. Add short summers and mosquitoes on top of that, and you get the picture. Nevertheless, the population increased by 16% since 2002 which brought a lot of new residential construction. Number 28. Orenburg. Orenburg is a city in southwest Russia, on Ural River, near the border with Kazakhstan, with a population of 549,000 people. The city was founded in 1743 and played a major role in Pugachev's rebellion from 1773 to 1774, the largest peasant revolt in Russian history. The city is famous for its Orenburg shawls made from goat down, one of the classic symbols of Russian handicraft along with the Russian dolls. In 1966, natural gas fields were discovered near the city. That's why major employers in the city today are energy companies, but the average salary is just $553. Downsides are limited opportunities, lack of good paying jobs, and remoteness from the major cities. 
Also, the climate is not very comfortable. You get very hot summers and cold and windy winter. Also, there's hardly any forests or nature, mostly steppes. From 2002, the population increased by just 4.4%. Well, at least they get a good amount of sunshine. 2,269 hours. So guys, I'll be handling two, two of the city so that we can fasten this reaction. So have you seen that Russia is beyond Moscow? Because a lot of, is it Moscow or Moscow? He's calling Moscow. Honestly, do not listen to what you see on social media, especially all these comments. Always do your own research. Because a lot of you commented that Russia, apart from Moscow or Moscow, what you see in Russia is um, mud houses, people living in poverty. But you have seen all these cities that are showing. It's just like every other city in the West. Everywhere looks so beautiful. Everywhere looks very green. Greener than a lot of cities that you have seen in the West, right? But these people are projected as poor country that only Moscow is what Russia have to offer. Look at all the greeneries. Look at all the beautiful houses. And again, one thing you have noticed within these three uh, cities they have called, each city has mineral resources. So R Russia is a country blessed with mineral resources. But a lot of time, I have also seen Russian talking bad about Russia. There's this Russian guy that do reaction video. I don't know if he's intentionally talking bad about Russia or he's truly, truly talking bad about Russia. But what I want to tell you is that no matter how you sell your country off for on social media, in order to gain favor from people who don't like your country you're doing yourself more harm than good honestly everybody every country has their own downside every country has their own downside the only thing is that over the years a lot of people have been selling the good things of their country the smaller good part of their country to us which is the reason why everybody want to leave their country want to abandon everything in their country and go to other people country but if you look around do you see that a lot of times especially if you're in a country that is a bit developed a lot of time that thing you have in your country is the same thing compared to what you have what you are where you're running to a lot of chinese people who left china to go and like go to other place and become citizens a lot of them are regretting i've seen somebody who commented that he they left china and become citizen of a country i don't want to call con that country's name before you guys say it's a propaganda talk but this person is regretting it today he's re they are regretting the fact that they cannot go back and become the citizen of china again they will always tell people that i'm a chinese but they are not citizens of china today because they have like give up their citizenship because they feel like th this country will forever become top country in the world no if you see there was a time roman was one of the strongest uh, country in the world after that britain become one of the strongest country in the world after that after britain u.s now china is coming up to take over the world to be like one of the top countries if you are in a place better protect the image of your country instead of selling the image of your country off because everything you have in your country every back downside you have in your country is in other country just that maybe you are not able to see it because they are hiding it well this is what i learned over the years of me traveling within other africa over the months not years okay let's continue number 27 vladivostok Vladivostok has a population of 601,000 people and it's a major Pacific port city in Russia overlooking around the Golden Horn Bay on the Sea of Japan near the borders with China and North Korea. It was founded in 1860 as a military outpost. It's the terminus of the Trans-Siberian Railway which links it to Moscow in a seven-day journey. Tourism plays a major part in the city's economy. The city is hilly and is famous for its giant cable state bridges and the Ruski Island with a new campus of Far Eastern Federal wow, University. This is From 2002, the population increased by just 1%, which means it's not growing. Young professionals try to move away to Moscow or St. Petersburg. The city's main industries are logistics, commercial fishing, and the naval base. The average salary is pretty high at $826 a month, which is impressive, but consumer prices in Vladivostok are 28% higher than in Ekaterinburg. Climate is not the best. It's humid and it's windy, but it's sunny at least. The warmest month is August, so if you decide to visit Vladivostok, come in August. The biggest downside is that the city is extremely far away from everything, 9,000 kilometers away from Moscow, and the seven hour time difference with Moscow makes it very challenging to do business as usual. The good thing about living here is there are plenty of beaches and secluded places, fresh seafood, and direct flights to Asian countries. 
I once took a direct flight to Taiwan from here. Took three and a half hours. Very convenient. All right. Guys, I love this particular city they just showed now. I love it a lot because it has a lot of tourist attraction. Like, if I want to live in Russia, but personally, I will try to live in a, in one of the city that is not as expensive, so that if I'm making content from Russia, I'll be able to like still have a lot to do. Like this, uh, this this particular city is so very beautiful based on the uh, footage you have seen. It's extremely extremely beautiful. It has a lot of bridges that you can create content from, and also they say that it is great for tourism. Like it is a place for tour for tourists. So I feel like there will be a lot to do in the country as a content creator who is in Russia. So if I go to Russia, I would like to visit this city. Let's continue. Number 26. Now we're going to relocate to central Russia, to the city of Yaroslavl. Yaroslavl is just 250 kilometers northeast of Moscow. It's located at the confluence of the Volga and the Kodorosl rivers. In 2021, the city had a population of 601,000 people. It's part of the Golden Ring group of ancient towns around Moscow. It was founded all the way in the year 1010. It's hard to believe it, but in the 17th century, it was the Russia's second largest city. The historic part of the city is a World Heritage Site, with monasteries like the Golden Dome Transfiguration Church with 16th century frescoes. Besides the tourist part, Yaroslavl is a large industrial center. There's a motor plant, an electric locomotive repair plant, a shipbuilding plant, as well as oil refining and chemical industries, but the city economy is not doing too well. The average salary is just $560, and since 2002 the population decreased by 2%. It seems like the biggest upside of the city is its proximity to Moscow. No Guys, one thing I'm noticing here is that a lot of these Russian cities has a lot of green. Like, there's a lot of greeneries everywhere. Have you seen all the footage we've been, watched, we've been seeing since? You see a lot of greeneries. I love greeneries. I feel like greeneries beautifies a country. Another thing I'm noticing is that Russia have... Um, a, a, a kind of building that's, that, that, that looks so very unique. I've said it in one of my videos. Even if you go to Russian embassy in your country, in the one in my country, they have the way they do their architecture. And I love it. I love the fact that once I see a, 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 a footage from Russia, I can identify that this is coming from Russia based on the structure of the building I see in the video. Also, I also love the fact that a lot of... All this building has white color. I pe I personally love white monocolors. So I'm seeing a lot of monocolors in all the cities I've seen here. I've seen a lot of monocolors. Also, I also want to point out that a lot of, of these build all these buildings I have seen look a bit similar like some buildings I've seen in Europe, particularly in Paris and um, some part of Europe that I have watched a video. Some of these uh, structures look exactly or similar to that so let's continue watching i hope you're enjoying this video so far if there's anything the, the narrator miss or i'm missing please leave it in the comment section uh, also remember that i'm commenting based on what i saw in this video so let's continue number 25 mahachkala mahachkala is the capital and the largest city of the republic of dagestan it was founded in 1844 as a fortress of the russian empire the city is located on the Caspian Sea with a population of over 604,000 people, which is up almost 31% from 2002. Mahachkala is one of the fastest growing cities in Russia and is currently going through a construction boom. It's located in a very picturesque place. You got mountains on one side and the Caspian Sea on the other. But the problem is the sea is polluted and so are the beaches. Here you have hot, dry summers and mild winters. But the local mentality is very different from the rest of Russia. It's very conservative. 85% follow Islam, and ethnic Russians account for just 5% of the population. Family comes first in everything, which is good, but at the same time it brings nepotism and corruption. A lot of the things about the city, like medical care and roads, are in a very sorry state. The most important industrial sector is the oil refineries, as well as textile factories. And unemployment in Dagestan in 2020 was at 15%, and good jobs are extremely hard to find. And the average salary is one of the lowest on the list. $458 a month. And now we're going to relocate back to the far east of Russia and talk about the city of Khabarovsk. And my friend Natasha is going to help me with that. Natasha, please take it away. 
Number 24. Khabarovsk. The city has a population of 610,000 people and is located at the confluence of two rivers, the Amur and the Usur River. And uh, this city is located in the far east of Russia, 8,000 kilometers far from Moscow and just 30 kilometers away far from China. Recently, the city was all over the news because of the protest that began in July of 2020 in support of the local governor, Sergei Furgal, who won elections in 2018 in a landslide victory, but was arrested two years later. One of the downsides of living in the city is the weather because it gets too cold in the winter and too hot in the summer. Another thing is that it is really far from Moscow but the upside is the proximity to Asian countries. Believe it or not, it is the sunniest city on the list. Every year it gets 2,400 hours of sunshine. That is 50% more than in St. Petersburg. The economy is based on timber, oil, gas and energy industries, where some professionals can make as much as $2,500 a month, but a regular school teacher will make only around $350. Back to you, Slava. Thanks, Natasha. And next on the list is number 23. Guys, do you remember these guys? Sorry, I forgot to give credit to them. They are the people that are added to their video first. Um, the first Russian video I asked that they did um, Moscow uh, race station. Do you remember them? I remember them because of this lady. So guys, honestly, I feel like a, Russia has a lot of mineral resources. It seems like each of the city in Russia, each city in Russia has a lot of oil reserve. If you don't know, Russia is one of the country in the world with largest mineral resources, like they have vast mineral resources. But I have not done deep research on the kind of mineral resources are found in Russia. But based from this video, I know that they have high oil reserve and gas. You see that there's a lot of oil companies, like all this, all the um cities they have mentioned every of the city has large deposit of oil which is the reason why they are having oil companies in the place number 23 irkutsk irkutsk has a population of 618,000 people the city lies on the angara river a tributary of the nsa the city was founded in 1661 and was an exile post for much of the 19th century during the russian civil war Irkutsk became the site of many furious, bloody clashes between the whites and the reds. One of the many city's attractions is the city promenade along the Angara. There are a lot of wooden houses in the center of Irkutsk. The latest industries are heavy engineering and food products. From 2002, the population increased by 4%, and the average salary today is impressive, $717 a month. Tourism plays an important part because this is the closest major city to Lake Baikal, wow. the largest freshwater lake on Earth. There's so many things you can do here. You can even go skating on the lake. And you may be familiar with this girl. It's Ellie from Russia. Number 22, Ulyanovsk. Ulyanovsk is a city on the Volga River, 705 kilometers east of Moscow, with a population of 620 people. Known as this the is beautiful. Soviet leader, Vladimir Green. Lenin. Ulyanovsk has some famous aircraft and auto companies like UAS Auto Manufacturing Plant and Aviostar Aircraft Company. But other than that, good jobs are very hard to find. Good the job. average salary is one of the lowest on the list, $477 a month. From 2002, the population decreased by 1.7%. And that always indicates that something is wrong. Well, what's wrong? Low wages and few career opportunities. Some locals say street crime is still a problem in some parts of the city. The city is losing the competition to other cities on the Volga, like Kazan and Samara. The biggest advantage of all these cities is the proximity to the Volga, which lets you do so many things in the summer, like camping and fishing and swimming. All right, we Guys, I'm so very not happy the fact that this average salary in this city is not too much because I love it. Like it looks so very beautiful. It has a lot of greens and it has a lot of tourist attraction too. I feel like if you if you are a, a YouTuber or you create uh, content, I feel like this will be perfect city for you because personally i feel like all this kind of city with a lot of tourist attraction and a lot of unseen place that is where you're supposed to go hide and create amazing content as a content creator so that people will see part of russia 
they have not seen before i feel like if you go to youtube there's a lot of videos from moscow if you go to all these kind of hidden cities that is where you'll be able to create beautiful and amazing content i'm seeing a lot of content a lot of cities that i'll visit when i go to russia like i'm loving this content honestly and i hope you're enjoying it so far if you do please give it a, th a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and share this video with everybody who loves reaction video irkutsk Irkutsk has a population of 618,000 people. The city lies on the Angara River, a tributary of the Enisei. The city was founded in 1661 and was an exile post for much of the 19th century. During the Russian Civil War, Irkutsk became the site of many furious, bloody clashes between the Whites and the Reds. One of the many city's attractions is the city promenade along the Angara. There are a lot of wooden houses in the center of Irkutsk. The latest industries are heavy engineering and food products. From 2002, the population increased by 4%, and the average salary today is impressive, $717 a month. Tourism plays an important part because this is the closest major city to Lake Baikal, the largest freshwater lake on Earth. There's so many things you can do here. You can even go skating on the lake. And you may be familiar with this girl. It's Ellie from Russia. Number 22, Ulyanovsk. Ulyanovsk is a city on the Volga River, 705 kilometers east of Moscow, with a population of 625,000 people, known as the birthplace of Soviet leader Vladimir Lenin. Ulyanovsk has some famous aircraft and auto companies like UAS Auto Manufacturing Plant and Aviastar Aircraft Company, but other than that, good jobs are very hard to find. The average salary is one of the lowest on the list, $477 a month. From 2002, the population decreased by 1.7%, and that always indicates that something is wrong. Well, what's wrong? Low wages and few career opportunities. Some locals say street crime is still a problem in some parts of the city. The city is losing the competition to other cities on the Volga like Kazan and Samara. The biggest advantage of all these cities is the proximity to the Volga, which lets you do so many things in the summer, like camping and fishing and swimming. All right, moving on to number 21. For that, we'll have to relocate back to Siberia. The city of Barnaul. Barnaul is a city on the western banks of the Ob River in the Altai region of Siberia with a population of 631,000 people. The city was founded in the 18th century as a center of silver and copper mining by the wealthy Demidov family who brought peasants to work here. Today, Barnaul is a major city in the southwest of Siberia. From 2002, the population increased by 5%. Average salary is low, $519 a month but typical starting salaries can be even lower, $250 a month. Few opportunities, cold winters, mosquitoes in the summer, and remoteness from the major cities is no fun. Altai region is one of the poorest regions overall. On the bright side, the city has a lot of green spaces and a nice promenade along the Ob, and it's sunny here. The city gets 2,200 sunshine hours a year. Barnaul is the closest city to the Altai mountains, just a three hour drive from Barnaul and you'll find yourself among the most beautiful mountains and lakes. Number 20, Izhevsk, back to central Russia. Izhevsk is the capital of Udmur Republic with a population of 646,000 people. It's located along the Izh River, west of the Ural Mountains. The local economy is based on defense, engineering, and metallurgy companies. There is an auto plant, Lada Izhevsk, which is part of Avtovas, that makes Lada Vestas. There's also Kalashnikov company that used to make the world famous AK 47s. Today they're still making pistols, machine guns, and even rockets. The average salary in the city is $544, but typical wages start as low as $300 a month. The city is green, there's a huge city pond and beautiful nature outside the city. But not a lot of things to do for young people, and a lot of young people are leaving as soon as they finish school. No international airport and cold climate to make things worse. But all in all, it's just an average town in Russia. Since 2002, the population increased by 2%. Number 19, Toyadi. Toyadi is situated along the Volga with a population of 693,000 people. Toyadi was founded in 1737 as a fortress called Stavropol. You might be thinking, Toyadi? What kind of weird name is that? This is beautiful. In the Soviet period, it was renamed after an Italian communist who accepted Soviet citizenship and died in Crimea. Toyadi is best known as the home of Russia's largest car manufacturer, Avtovas, that makes the famous Russian Ladas. Most of the modern city was constructed in the 1960s to house the workers of the factory. That's why it doesn't have any sites. 
but at least it was well planned and has a lot of parks. Today, Aftavaz employs 110,000 people. How much does an assembly line worker make a month? 400 to $500 a month. Locals also complain about chemical plants polluting the city. Luckily, for a big city, Talyadi is surprisingly lush with trees that certainly help with the pollution problem. Many parts of the city in the promenade along the Volga are run down. The nearest airport is Samar's airport, which is just 50 minutes away. The city's population has decreased by 1.4% since 2002. Number 18. Two men. Two men is situated just east of the Ural Mountains, along the Tura River, with a population of 817,000 people. It was founded in 1586 to support Russia's eastward expansion. Tumen was the first Russian settlement in Siberia. It's by far the fastest growing city in this list. The population increased by 60% since 2002. Wow! What's the appeal to live in this cold Siberian city? Jobs. Employment. Rich oil and gas fields were discovered in the region in the 1960s. While most of these lay hundreds of kilometers away, Tumen was the nearest railway junction, and so the city became their supply base, while the railway extended northward. Today, Tumen is an important service center for the oil and gas companies of the West Siberia. Employment opportunities bring a lot of people here. The city is very modern, they built a lot of high-quality roads, new malls, and a lot of new residential construction to keep up with the demand. Tumen is a type of city that's got the energy, there's a lot of things happening, and it's fun to live in a city like that. Around the city you'll find a lot of hot springs, which brings a lot of tourists. Average salary is $800, and even the median salary of $586 is pretty impressive and higher than in other similar cities. Number 17. Guys, I've seen second city I will live in. <laughs> I love this city, it's so beautiful. I love the fact that it's modern, it's modern. Like for everything that we have seen, I think this is the most modern that I've seen so far. And it's beautiful. The average salary is so high. And also, I saw a lot of young people. It seems like a place where a lot of young people will be. And the, based on how many people have migrated to the, the city and like the, the increase in population shows that uh, the city is for the young people. Sarata, back to the Volga region. It's another city on the Volga with a population of 830,000 people. Seems like most of the cities along the Volga are struggling. From 2002, the population decreased by 4.9%. That's a lot. Saratov was founded in 1590 and developed as a shipping port along the Volga and was historically important to the Volga Germans, ethnic Germans who settled along the Volga in the 18th century. They were allowed to maintain the German cultural language traditions and churches. In the early 20th century, many Volga Germans emigrated to Wisconsin, Minnesota, Kansas and other states in the US. After the German invasion in 1941, the Soviet government deported many of them eastward, where thousands died. Russian history has a lot of tragic moments. Sarato has a lot of manufacturing companies, but because of them the environment situation is mediocre. Add bad roads to that and low wages and you'll see why population is going down. The upside is that it's a fairly warm and sunny city, and it has a nice promenade along the Volga. And like we discussed earlier, living along the Volga or any major river is a big upside. Number 16. Krasnodar. Krasnodar has a population of 949,000 people. The city stands on the Kuban River. It was founded in 1793 as a fortress and built by the Cossacks to become a trading center for southern Russia. It's the second fastest growing city on this list after two men. Since 2002, the population increased by a staggering 47% and will soon top the 1 million mark. Why are all these people moving here? Because it's warm, it's sunny, and it's just two hours away from the Black Sea and the Caucasus Mountains. How warm is it? It's about as warm as New York City or Rome, Italy, but the summer months of July and August can be brutally hot, like in Texas, 35 Celsius every day and above. While it's great having more people for the city economy, Krasnodar was not built to be a major city. So now they're dealing with the problems they did not anticipate, like traffic congestion, lots of chaotic and regulated residential construction, some parts of the city are turning into a concrete jungle, trees are getting cut down. The average salary is $640, but with so many newcomers, good jobs are hard to find. The city is famous for its football club, Krasnodar, and it has probably the best city park in Russia. Built by the founder of retail chain, Magnet, Sergei Galitsky, one of the best entrepreneurs of modern Russia. It's a great city and has little pollution, 
And for those with a lot of money, the city's got some fantastic neighborhoods, like this German village, where houses go for several hundred thousand dollars, but you get a house with a swimming pool in a gated neighborhood in Russia. Number 15. Volgograd. Volgograd, 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 Volgograd is another city, is another city in the city south of Russia. Russia. It stands, it stands on, the on the western bank of the bank Volga, River. Volga River. The population, the population of the city is 1 million and 5,000 people. people. Formerly known as Stalingrad, Stalingrad. it was the site it was of the Second World War's, World War's Battle, Battle of Stalingrad, Stalingrad. Today, commemorated today commemorated by a huge by statue, statue, the Motherland, the Motherland Hall. Hall. It is also it is in the also south of Russia, but it's not as successful as Krasnodar. Since 2002, the population decreased by 0.6%. Why is that? It's the poorest city in Russia among the cities with a population of over 1 million, though the average salary is $521, which is not a lot. In reality, many people work for $250 or $350 a month. Good jobs are extremely hard to find, and the climate is not for everyone. It gets too hot and dry in the summer. Volgograd is in the steppe region, so no trees can grow unless you plant them, water them, and take good care of them. There are a lot of insects too, like midges, the same ones that annoyed soccer players during World Cup in 2018. On the bright side, the city is on the Volga, and it gets plenty of sunshine. Wow, this is beautiful. Well, Number 14, the city of Perm. Perm has a population of 1 million and 49,000 people and is located on the banks of the Kama River near the Ural Mountains. Since 2002, the population increased by 4.7%. Perm was founded in 1723, the same year as Yekaterinburg, by the same person, Vasily Tatisha. The Perm's position on the navigable Kama River, leading to the Volga, helped it become an important trade and manufacturing center. Today, Perm is a major railway hub and one of the industrial centers of the country. There are plenty of jobs and the average salary is $617. But the range is huge. Cafe workers get paid $250 a month, and the highest paying jobs are in the mining industry, an average of $825. However, compared to the nearby Kazan and Yekaterinburg, the city is lagging behind in many ways. From here, you can take a Volga River cruise all the way to Volgograd. The city is surrounded by beautiful nature. Climate is cold, and it's not very sunny. Guys, I love this city too. It's very, very beautiful. I wish they would be showing us inside the city, like some of the city they show us the inside. Some of the city they just show us uh, drone footage. But do not worry because I'm going to find videos that would like show us the inside and tell us things about some of these cities mentioned here. Do not worry, subscribe because we are going to uh, talk about that too. Someday, not today. Number 13. Voronish. The city of Voronish was founded in 1585. Today it's a large industrial center on the Voronish River with a population of 1,051,000 people. The city has a comfortable climate with fairly hot summers, but not scorching high like in Krasnodar or Volgograd, and mild winters. The city has a great location, just 4 hours away from Ukraine and 6 hours away from Moscow, and 10 hours away from the Black Sea. Not super close, but compared to 35 hours from Yekaterinburg, it's doable. Local jobs don't pay much, the average salary is $552, that's the biggest downside. But the city is developing fast and is surrounded by beautiful nature. There's very little pollution in the city. I remember growing up always thought of Voronish as a big village, but it's come a long way and it's a different city now. Not as fancy as Kazan or Moscow, but it's cozy and comfortable. From 2002 the population increased by 23.8% and that tells you something. People are moving here from the harsh climate of Siberia and the Urals bringing their skills and new ideas. From the drone, in the summer the city looks fantastic. Very Lots beautiful. of green spaces. Guys, let's talk about what he said. I feel like one of the major issues in the world is that people do not get to understand that um, cities are evolving, the world is evolving, and the fact that that is one thing that is inevitable in life, cities are changing the city you know or the country you know to be poor today can be world leading tomorrow that is how it is so he said that formerly he used to see this city as a village but right now you can see how developed and beautiful this city it has become and it will continue to grow so that is what you guys a lot of, of all these people commenting that russia is full of um mud houses and people are dying of hunger how, can you see that there's a lot of beautiful city in this country and you cannot sit down with your phone and put down a whole country down because you hate it and when they put your country down you become you you get triggered you get angry but that is what you're doing to other countries it's unfair 
Number 12. Back to Siberia. By the way, if you were to drive to Krasnoyarsk from Voronezh, it would take you 55 hours. That's how big Russia is. Krasnoyarsk is a city on the Yenisei River and has a population of 1,092,000 people. Krasnoyarsk is a major industrial center of Russia and a transportation hub on the Trans-Siberian Railway. From 2002, the population increased by 20%. Why? Plenty of jobs. Average salary of those working in the metallurgical industries can be 900 to $1,000 and more. The economy is centered around non-ferrous metallurgy and Krasnoyarsk is one of the largest producers of aluminum in the country. In addition, the city has a lot of universities, including the Siberian Federal University. As you might expect, it gets pretty cold during the winter. The record low is negative 52.8 Celsius. But because of the Krasnoyarsk hydroelectric dam 32 kilometers upstream, the NSA never freezes in winter. Because of all these industrial companies, air pollution is a big problem. And I mean really big. Just look at it. The main cause of the black sky is coal smoke. Krasnoyarsk has one of the largest hydroelectric power stations in the country. And at the same time, the city is heated with coal and receives energy from coal. At the same time, Krasnoyarsk is surrounded by beautiful forested mountains. It's like whatever nature did is perfect and whatever man is trying to do is the opposite. Because there are lots of mountains, there are lots of skiing resorts. And in the summertime, it's a great place to go hiking or rafting. So come visit Krasnoyarsk in the summer. Next, number 11, Ufa. Ufa is the capital and the largest city of the Republic of Bashkirtistan with a population of 1,126,000 people. The city lies at the confluence of the Belia and Ufa rivers to the west of the southern Ural Mountains. The city was founded in 1574 when a fortress was built on the side of the city by order of Ivan the Terrible. The average salary today is $644 a month. Petroleum company Bashneft, which stands for Bashkirian Oil, and several of its subsidiaries are headquartered in Ufa. Ufa is home to several oil refining and petrochemical industries, as well as several machine building plants. However, over the past 10 years, most of the Republic's assets, including oil production, have moved from regional to state ownership, including Bashneft, which is now part of Rosneft. And Ufa's city budget suffered greatly, as well as the city's ability to develop and create a quality urban environment, like in Moscow and Kazan. The city has a nice promenade along the Bel Air River. Major ethnic groups are Russians, 48.9%, Tatars, 28.3%, and Bashkirs, 17.1%. Bashkirs and Tatars are Muslim, so you'll see a lot of mosques alongside Orthodox churches in the city. Since 2002, the population increased by 8.1%. Now my buddy Konstantin is going to introduce his hometown of Rostov. Rostov-on-Don is country's largest city in the south of Russia with population of 1,138,000 people sitting at a convenient location when Don River meets the Sea of Azov. Rostov was founded in 1749 as a fortress to protect the southern border of Russia. The city is an industrial center with companies like Rossilmash, an international agricultural machinery manufacturer, and Rosvertol, producing both civilian and military choppers. The best thing about Rostov is that it's warm. Summers are hot and dry, and winters are mild and relatively short. The city has a fantastic location. It's only four and a half drive to the Black Sea and one hour drive to the Sea of Azov. Rostov's top attractions include the historic city center and the Don River Embankment and all Russia famous Leberdon, river's left side coast. Leberdon became a world famous site when it hosted the games of the FIFA World Cup 2018. And yes, Brazil played here at the new football stadium at the very heart of the FIFA World Cup Park. What really makes Rostov different from the rest of the country is people with their unique southern Cossack culture. The melting pot of Russians, Armenians, Georgians, Ukrainians and others warm, welcoming, generous, fair, outgoing and they have no problem showing it to strangers. Also, the rumor has it that the most beautiful girls in Russia live in Rostov. Among downsides of Rostov are slow traffic, low wages. Although the average salary officially is $600, it's not unusual to see people working for $300 per month and lots of dust that can be very irritating. Overall, Rostov is one of the best cities in entire Russia. Good stuff. Appreciate it, Kostya. Number 9. The city of Omsk. Omsk is the second largest city in Siberia. Look so according to him, this city has the most beautiful girls in Russia. So if you're the kind of person who is 
looking for russian girls i think this is where you find the most beautiful right um one thing i don't like he said about the city he said that the city has a lot of dust that is the only thing i don't like apart from that the city looks so beautiful for the fact that is also um and uh, where they played the fifa world cup in 2018 is another iconic thing to be remembered so but i want to know where you're watching if you're watching from russia which city is your city have we like talk about it so let's continue and um, what I, I am understanding is that it looks like it snow the whole of russia like every part of russia snows because all the places i've seen there's always snow number nine the city of omsk omsk is the second largest city in siberia located at the confluence of the Irtysh and om rivers it has a population of 1,139,000 people Omsk was founded in 1716, around the time when the Russian farmers and Cossacks started to settle in Siberia, and it was a fortress first and later served as a place of exile for many years. The construction of the Trans-Siberian Railroad in the 1890s led to the rapid economic growth. Today it's an industrial city and a transportation hub, just two hours away from the border with Kazakhstan. The economy is based on oil refining, petrochemistry, chemical industry and mechanical engineering, but the wages are low. The average salary is just $553 a month. The city doesn't seem to have a long-term development strategy and to be moving forward. That's why a lot of young, ambitious people try to move away to other cities. And the population barely changed since 2002, just 1% growth. Although the city is on the same latitude as Moscow, the climate is very different. Summers are hotter and winters are colder. At least it's sunny here. Number 8. Samara. Samara is a city in southwestern Russia with a population of 1,144,000 people and it's framed by the Volga and Samara rivers. During the Soviet era it was a closed city because it was the center of rocket building industry. But even today it's known for the production of aerospace launch vehicles, satellites and other related equipment. It's an industrial city and pollution is one of the concerns. Although the average salary officially is $593, a lot of people are working for $350 a month or less. Some say the city is not well taken care of, but at least they did a good job on the city embankment. It's a five kilometer long city promenade along the Volga, one of the most popular spots in the city. In the summertime, it's fantastic. You can go swimming or fishing or go on a river cruise. The city is sitting in a very nice location between steppes and forests, very picturesque. Since 2002, population has decreased by 1.1%, which tells you something ain't right. Number 7. The seventh largest city is Chelyabinsk, with a population of 1,188,000 people. It's an industrial city close to the Ural Mountains, surrounded by lakes. It's famous for its tank production and Chelyabinsk meteor that hit the city in February 2013. Some of the current challenges of the city are air pollution and long-term economic decay. The city produces 60% of Russia's zinc, 40% of large diameter pipes, and 6% of rolled steel and ferrous metals. However, salaries are low, and it seems that Chalabins just doesn't have what it takes to be a fun place to live in. There's nothing special about it. That's why locals try to move to other parts of Russia or abroad. The best thing about Chalabinsk is that it's surrounded by great nature and endless lakes, hundreds of them. Other than that, it's behind its neighbor Yekaterinburg which is just two hours away in almost every way. Average salary in the city is $560 a month and population increased by 10% since 2002. Number 6. Nizhny Novgorod. Nizhny Novgorod has a population of 1,244,000 people. The city is located at the confluence of Oka and Volga rivers. It was founded in 1221 and it's known for its 16th century Kremlin. It was close to foreign tourists during the Soviet times because of its military production and R&D companies. Today it's a major industrial center in Russia. Some of the famous companies are Gaz, automobile plant employing 25,000 people that's producing gazelle minibuses and Volgas. They also have shipbuilding and plane building plants making the famous MiG jets. The city is split into two parts, upper part and lower part, and you can take a cable car to go from one to the other and enjoy the views. A new football stadium was completed for the 2018 Soccer World Cup. Except for the city promenade and the Kremlin, locals say that the city is neglected and dirty. The city has been losing population for many years, and since 2002 the population has decreased by 5%, and it seems like the city is stuck in its development. 
Just like Chelyabinsk, it's struggling to keep its people from moving away. Average salary is the same as in Chelyabinsk, $560, but it's pretty misleading because at the car plan, people are making $350 on the average. It's a very beautiful city to visit as a tourist, but living here is another story. The best part about the city is the beautiful views of the confluence of the two rivers, Oka and Volga. Number 5. Kazan Kazan is a beautiful city on the banks of the Volga and Kazanki rivers, with a population of 1,257,000 people. It was founded all the way in the year 1005, which makes it over 1,000 years old. It's the capital of the Republic of Tatarstan and the cultural center of the Tatar people, and it's best known for its centuries-old Kazan Kremlin. It's a tourist-friendly city with a beautiful promenade. The local economy is based on petrochemical, engine building, metal and woodworking enterprises. The average salary is $663. It's one of the best managed cities in Russia for sure. It's clean, it has great roads, a subway system, bicycle lanes, a wonderful city center and promenade, a state-of-the-art soccer stadium with the largest outside screen in the world, a racetrack and so much more. It's a city that impresses and claims to be the third capital of Russia, although I'm sure Novosibirsk and Yekaterinburg will argue with that. But some say there might be a little bit of discrimination and unless you're an ethnic Tatar, you can build a government career here. The largest ethnic groups in the city are Russians, 48.6%, and Tatars, 47.6%. The population increased by an impressive 13.8% since 2002. And finally, number four, my hometown of Yekaterinburg. Today it has a population of 1.5 million people. It was founded in 1723, and since then it served as the mining capital of the Russian Empire. It's known as the place where they executed the Tsar family in 1918. Church on the Blight was built on the site of the Apatyev house, where the execution happened. Also, Boris Yeltsin, the first Russian president, started his political career here. The economy of the city is doing better than other cities of similar size, which brings the average salary to $712 a month. There are lots of good colleges, including the Ural State University. The population has increased by 15.5% since 2002. The city offers a wide range of career opportunities from IT jobs to metallurgy. It's a business city with a great location, connecting east and west. I can be in Moscow in two and a half hours, and I can be in Novosibirsk in two and a half hours and flights are affordable. Also, the time difference is not an issue. It's just two hours ahead of Moscow and one hour behind of Sibirsk. The city has a subway system with just one line, trams and buses, but most of the city is pretty walkable anyway. There is a good choice of restaurants, coffee shops and craft beer spots. Outside of the city, you'll find some medium-sized ski resorts and parks. What about the downsides? Well, the biggest downside is the weather. We get cold winters here, not as bad as in Siberia, but still. And another downside is we don't have any huge rivers around the city. That's a bummer. Number 3. Novosibirsk. It's the largest city in Siberia on the Ob River with a population of 1,620,000 people. It was founded in 1893 and the Trans-Siberian Railway fueled much of the city's growth. It became a large industrial center during the Stalin period, and today it's an industrial, educational, and scientific center of Siberia. It offers great career opportunities in industries like energy, gas supply, metallurgy, and others. There are a lot of startup companies like Movavi. It's a video editor, which I use sometimes. The average salary in the city is $642, which is not all that impressive actually, but it keeps bringing people in, and the population increased by 13.6% since 2002. There are a lot of good universities. The city has a subway system and an international airport. Flight time to Moscow is four hours and time difference is three hours. The architecture outside the city center is nothing special, mostly boring Soviet buildings. Akadem Gorodok is a district 30 kilometers outside the city center and they call it the Siberian Silicon Valley and it features Novosibirsk State University and 35 research institutes. What are the downsides? It's cold, that's number one. In the winter, there's so much snow in the city that the city cleaning department doesn't keep up, so the city becomes a mess. Also, the locals complain that the city gets dusty and... Yes, I love this uh, third city also. I feel like this only three will be one of some of the most beautiful. 
and most developed so i see this one as the most developed so far i have ever seen like and most modern no sorry no most developed most modern so far i have ever seen and i would love to visit this place too so i feel like the the other ones would be like saint peter bug and and uh, and moscow i've seen a lot of people commenting from saint peter bug if i get that right but what is still surprising me is the fact that russia like um cities within russia have different time zone like it's 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 it, like it's still very surprising to me and we're coming to number two saint petersburg it's a russian port city on the baltic sea Today its population is 5,384,000 people and since 2002 it's increased by 15.4%. What brings people here? Better career opportunities, better wages and proximity to Europe. And they say it's the most beautiful Russian city. St. Petersburg was founded in 1703 by Peter the Great and it's home to countless cathedrals, palaces, theaters and museums including the Hermitage, one of the largest art museums in the world. It's also famous for its drawbridges and white knights. Tourism is an important part of the economy. Although the economy is very diversified, from shipbuilding yards to medical equipment production. The Lachte Center is the tallest building in Europe and it contains the headquarters of the largest Russian company, Gazprom. The average salary in the city is $992 a month, which is much higher than what we've seen so far. But there are downsides, of course. The city's latitude is almost the same as Anchorage, Alaska, which means lack of sunshine. Just 1,636 sunshine hours a year. Also, the weather is unpredictable and changes all the time. People say this will eventually get to you, and people don't last here more than five years before they start getting depressed, unless they're taking a lot of vitamin D. Also, it's humid, it's windy, and it makes you feel miserable in the winter. I'd take the Siberian cold over this any day. I don't care what they say about this city. I will visit this city if I go to Russia. I will visit. It. I see. I know. That I have a lot of subscribers from this particular city because they've been commenting. So I must visit the city. I don't care. This is so very beautiful. This city so, looks so beautiful. And finally, number one, Moscow. My friend Marcus will help me out with this one because he's lived in the city for 11 years. Take it away, Marcus. And finally, Russia's capital and largest city by far, Moscow on the Moskva River. The population today is 12,655,000 and since 2002, it has increased by an impressive 24.7%. On average, that's over 150,000 per year. Moscow offers the best standards of living and the best opportunities in Russia overall. This is also where you'll find the best universities and hospitals. It's never boring, just like New York City, there's always something going on. Theaters, museums, concerts, different language clubs, you name it. The city's got convenient public transportation, including a subway system with 250 stations. It's the wealthiest city in Russia with 71 billionaires and an average monthly salary of $1,514, twice that of most of the cities we've just covered. In Moscow, you can live a very comfortable life as long as you're making enough money. It's clean and it's safe. Any downsides? Long winters and just 1,731 hours of sunshine per year. Traffic congestion. If you're driving, it's not unusual if it takes you two hours to get from one part of the city to another. But nothing's perfect, right? So why don't all Russians move to Moscow? Because it's expensive. The average cost of rent for a Moscow apartment is $680 per month, and few can afford that. Thanks, Marcus. All right, so let's sum it up. Cities in the far east of Russia. You get good wages, cold weather, but sunny. But the consumer prices are also 30 to 40% higher than in the rest of Russia. It's far from Moscow, and it's close to Asia. In the cities of Siberia, you get good wages, pollution problems, very cold winters, but still sunny. In the Ural cities, you get good wages, but cold winters. In the cities of the Volga region, you get mild climate, low wages, and lack of opportunities, except for Kazan. The south of Russia, you get warm, sunny weather, but very low wages. And in Moscow, you get okay weather and best career and business opportunities. I try to be as accurate as I can, but come on, it's 30 cities, so take it easy on me if I don't get everything right. If you decided to visit Russia after watching this video sometime in the future, you can contact Marcus and he's gonna hook you up with a Russian visa. Um, 
I'm planning to go to Russia. <laughs> I'm making a lot of promises. But guys, let's let's see how this year will be. So I know that I will I will stay in Moscow if I go to Russia. Forget the fact that I say that. If I go to Russia for tourism, um there's chances that I will stay in Moscow and also go to um St. Petersburg and stay for some time, then visit all the some of the cities that I point that I love, visit visit them. But um honestly, if I want to live in Russia for real, I think based on this video, I'll live in Moscow or I'll live in St. Petersburg or I'll live in one of those cities they mentioned before. I'll live in a place that is more modern and also I can do a lot in terms of content creating. The reason why I feel like Moscow will be also okay for me as a content creator is because there's a lot to see and it's one of the most popular city in Russia. Anywhere you go on TikTok and everywhere, videos from Moscow is performing so beautifully. So guys, um wish me luck so that one day you i will see me in person i'll be like hey yes i'm in i'm in russia <laughs> wish me luck wish me luck wish me luck so that so you'll see me in russia so if you want to see me in russia please subscribe to my channel be sure to watch any ad you see on my channel on my channel guys i'm feeling sleepy i'm feeling very sleepy i don't know if you can see it on my face but i'm feeling extremely extremely sleepy i'm tired I'm feeling headache. Like a lot of things is happening right now. I'm trying to open my eye. I don't know why, but I feel like I have not been having a lot of sleep because of this consistent um, video I'm making every day. Editing, always editing, always going on social media, searching for the topic, the high, the the topic that will attract you guys to react to like this a lot so i'm feeling very sleepy i love this video and also i'll check out check out if you want to go to russia check out the link he told you like you should check the person that can help you with uh, russian visa so guys let's see how it goes like i think everyone should spread their wings and travel sell your properties if it were us selling your property, sell your properties and travel, shake new possibility, shake new countries, explore the world and see that there's a lot of beautiful things in this world. Guys, I'm feeling sleepy. Please, I'm going. Uh, see you guys in my next video.